Cura is an open source slicing software used to prepare models for 3D printing at the Oakville Public Library. In this tutorial, we'll review the basic interface and key settings for preparing a successful print. When you launch the program, you'll notice you're working in the prepare stage, and there are three stages that you can move through. Start by making sure that the correct printer is selected. The Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect is the machine available at the library. If you don't see it listed, you can add the printer here. You'll also need to ensure that the material is set to PLA and the nozzle is 0.4 millimeters. Next, you can open your 3D model using the folder icon in the top left corner. For this demonstration, I've downloaded a 3D model from Thingiverse. The last three characters of the file name indicate the file type. In this case, I'm using an STL file format, which is compatible with the software. A full list of supported file types can be found here. When you open a file, it'll automatically load onto the build plate. You can add more than one model, as long as it fits within the printable area, indicated by these blue lines. Objects outside this printable area will appear in gray. To navigate the workspace, you can use the view icons on the bottom left of the screen. Alternatively, you can use the following shortcuts. To spin around the build plate, right-click with your mouse and drag. To zoom in and out, use the scrolling wheel on your mouse or two fingers on a trackpad. To pan around the workspace, hold shift while right-clicking and dragging. To activate your object, simply left-click on it. This will highlight the object in blue and activate the adjustment tools on the left-hand side. This panel will allow you to move, scale, and rotate your object, among other options. To move your object, you can input the exact coordinates along the X, Y, and Z axis. These axes correspond with the dimensions of the machine. The X axis is indicated in red, representing the width of the printer. The y-axis, indicated in green, represents the depth of the machine, while the z-axis, in blue, represents the height. Alternatively, you can use the colored handles on the models to drag and drop objects along the corresponding axes. Locking your model will secure it in place. To scale your object, you can input exact dimensions in millimeters, by percentage, or by using the handles. If snap scaling is selected, the model will scale at 10% at a time, while uniform scaling will ensure proportions are kept. To rotate an object, manually click and drag the hooped handles. Snap rotation is enabled by default and will rotate the object 15 degrees at a time. Best practice is to rotate the object in order to reduce the amount of supports. Areas that may require supports will be highlighted in red on your model. With the rotation tool, you can reset any rotation adjustments, lay it flat on the closest flat surface of the model, or manually select the face you want to lay flush on the build plate. You can use the mirror tool to then flip your object on the three axes by selecting the corresponding handles. At any point, you can edit undo to backtrack your adjustments. By right-clicking on a selected model, you'll be provided with further options, such as centering your model on the build plate, deleting it from the workspace, or multiplying objects for batch printing. Once you're happy with the position of your model, you can choose your print quality settings. To open the drop-down menu, click the quality settings on the top right. Recommended settings are optimized for the printer and filament used at the library. There are four profiles to choose from that determine the quality of the print. Draft, Normal, Fine, and Extra Fine. The finer the setting, the smoother the finish will be, but the longer the print will take. You can also adjust the infill, which is a honeycomb-like structure inside the shell of the object. 20% is an average infill. Reducing the infill will produce a lighter and faster print, while increasing the infill will create a more solid form. If your object requires supports for overhangs, be sure to check the box. This will ensure any overhangs less than 45 degrees from the vertical won't droop while printing. 
Remember that areas highlighted in red on your model may indicate that you need supports. However, in this case, it's not necessary. The final checkbox is for objects that require build plate adhesion. With adhesion enabled, the printer is going to lay that foundation before printing your actual object. For more advanced setting options, you can switch to the custom mode. This will allow you to adjust things such as layer height, shells, temperature, and the type of build plate adhesion. All settings can be found using the search bar. If you're ever unsure of how a given setting will affect your print, simply hover over it for a full description. With print settings selected, you can now slice your model using the blue button on the bottom right. This will give you an estimate on print time, as well as how much material the print will use in grams. Print times cannot exceed your reservation. For a breakdown of time and materials, simply hover over the eye icon. This can help you determine where you might be able to adjust settings to reduce print time if necessary. Reducing an object's size, the infill, and layer quality are generally the easiest ways to save on time. With any adjustments, you'll need to re-slice your object for an updated print estimate. When you're satisfied with your settings and the print time, you can move on to the preview stage. This will allow you to visualize how the object will look when printed. You can use the layer slider on the right to preview a specific layer. The path slider on the bottom will then simulate the printing process of the selected layer when played. When you're ready to print, save your file to a removable drive. If you have multiple USB keys plugged into your computer, you'll need to select the correct device using the drop-down arrow and save to file. When you save a sliced file in Cura, it converts it to G-code, which is a file format that the 3D printer can actually read. The default file type in Cura is Ultimaker Format Package, or .ufp. A full list of compatible file types can be found here. Be sure to take note of the file name so you can easily find it on your USB. Before ejecting your device, always make sure your file successfully transfers. With your G-code on a USB key, you can now move on to the final step in the 3D print process, which is the printing itself.